Last Monday, I dropped my review on the MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Pro, and today I wanna to compare it to the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max. I wanna talk about the performance difference because the M1 Pro surprised me. It beat out my desktop computer, which is the 11th gen Intel 11900K with an RTX 3080, and it also destroyed the fastest laptop I have in the studio in certain applications. You have to understand, these MacBooks are not for everyone, so don't feel like you need to go out and buy these. These have a very narrow path. They're really aimed towards creators, more specifically, video editors. As soon as you start moving out of that zone, then you can technically get better performance on certain Windows laptops. But I did rerun my Puget Bench Premiere Pro test, and this scored 1,000, but this scored 1,100. That is absolutely insane. A lot of YouTubers will show you a render test, which tells you how long it takes to render a video, which is kind of nice, but that's only one part of the story. Puget Bench Premiere Pro measures everything. Everything from multicam performance to live playback, 4K, 8K, CPU-based effects, GPU-based effects, and it even measures rendering time. The second thing is, Final Cut Pro. I'm not gonna show this again. We already know Final Cut Pro runs on these things, so it doesn't surprise me. This is Apple's product, and it doesn't matter how many layers I had on it, like I had five layers of 8K footage and it played it back like a beast, both in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Adobe Premiere Pro. And the same holds true for a crappy codec from Sony, like 422 10-bit using Sony's awful compression, played back perfectly in all three NLEs. The one thing that surprised me though, was how much faster these MacBook Pros rendered a video compared to my desktop computer. Not like crazy faster, but still, a laptop with a low powered chip, beating out a high powered chip inside of a desktop computer that has more RAM and a powerful RTX 3080. Like that kind of stuff just blows my mind. I also re-ran my Mozilla Firefox compile test to see if there was a difference between M1 Pro and M1 Max, and the short answer is no. As soon as you move up from the base model eight core MacBook Pro 14, all the CPU SKUs become 10 core. So compile times were identical. Same holds true if you're running a Cinebench test. You guys asked me to do 3D work because you wanted to see how it performs. And I think that's one area that Windows laptops still do better on. Something about those CUDA cores and those Nvidia cards that 3D work prefers. If you run something like After Effects, the MSI GE76 definitely scored higher, but the question becomes, do you want the best performance possible or do you want the best balance? Because these guys ran silent or very silent and you get better battery life and a smaller form factor. But if you're someone who's using Blender, PCs are still better, you know? Don't get me wrong, if you're rendering using nothing but the CPU, these guys keep up very well. But as soon as you move it from the CPU to the GPU, which you can't do with these guys, the RTX cards just dominate. Like I literally rendered the BMW scene in 27 seconds compared to three minutes using the CPU. As for gaming, which I still feel like these laptops are not gaming laptops because the library of good games is very small, but you will see anywhere from a 15 to 20 FPS difference going from M1 Pro to M1 Max. There was only one game I tested where the frame rates stayed exactly the same, and that was Shadow of Mordor. Now, I got a lot of World of Warcraft questions in my previous video. The M1 Pro, ran it like a champ. You know, I got really good frame rates, around 150 frames per second. Settings were at 1920 by 1200. Graphical setting seven, which is high. And I tested it against the M1 Max, and of course, the M1 Max did a lot better. It got a lot closer to 200 frames per second, which is the cap for World of Warcraft. Now, if you decide to play Warcraft on its native resolution for these displays, you're gonna take a big performance hit. Like it's gonna drop down to 50 or 60 frames per second. I do have one comment about these displays. Like they are absolutely gorgeous. And I encourage you to go into the Apple store, regardless of whether you're buying one of these or not, and just play an HDR video on it. Like it just looks proper. You know, like I've used a lot of HDR monitors, like display HDR 400 or 600, but that's not bright enough for true HDR. The fact that these guys can get up to a thousand or even 1600 nits of peak brightness is crazy, right? And you see that in the moments where HDR is present on the screen. Now, granted, these displays usually run at around 500 nits, if you have them like this, and they ramp up to 1,000 or 1,600, depending what's being displayed. They do this in order to preserve battery life. Like, could you imagine running these laptops at 1,000 nits on battery all the time? It would drain the battery pretty fast. The other thing I noticed is that even though these guys have the exact same speaker count, it's about two decibels louder 
on the MacBook Pro 16. It's not like massive, but if you listen closely, you can hear that the MacBook Pro 16 does get a bit louder, and that's most likely due to the bigger chassis so sound can reverberate. Now there's been a lot of confusion about fast charging and MagSafe. I'll make it simple for you guys, okay? If you buy the MacBook Pro 16, the only way to fast charge it is via MagSafe. You cannot fast charge this laptop by using any of the USB Type-C ports. If you buy the MacBook Pro 14, as long as it comes with a 96 watt charger, there's a lower charger if you buy the base model, but as long as it comes with a 96 watt charger, not only can you charge it via MagSafe, but you can also fast charge it via USB Type-C. Now don't get me wrong, you can still charge the 16 inch model via USB Type-C, you just can't fast charge it. As for battery life, it's been fantastic. Like if I am editing a video nonstop, I'll get about five to six hours of use on the MacBook Pro 16. If I'm editing a video nonstop on the MacBook Pro 14, it'll top out at about four to five hours. Another thing you guys need to know is fan noise. MacBook Pro 16 fans, I don't even think they exist. Like they never go on. The bigger chassis, it's just a lot easier to cool than what you get in the 14 inch. The 14 inch notebook, I can get these fans to go on quickly. Like I'll be playing World of Warcraft and literally three minutes later, I can hear the fans. Now they're not loud. They're not loud at all. Like they don't get nearly as loud as the Intel MacBook Pro. In fact, it always stays under 40 decibels, but it's just a lot easier to get the fans going on this compared to this. The other thing is how much RAM do you get? If you're a video creator like me, I usually have DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut open and I'll have maybe 10 Chrome tabs, Spotify, Discord in the background, and I'll be using about 13 to 15 gigabytes of memory. But even after I'm like rendering a video and going back and forth between different cameras, I never really see the RAM usage past 20 gigabytes. So I feel like for a lot of video creators, 32 gigabytes is gonna be the sweet spot. Developers, these are great machines, but you have to ask yourself, do you really need this type of performance? Are you working on AI where you need CPU and GPU performance constantly? Or are you just like compiling these little programs which you can do on a MacBook Pro 13? Save your money and just buy the MacBook Pro 13. I honestly feel like these laptops have a very narrow focus right now. These are really aimed towards the creator. As soon as you start dabbling in 3D work, which is also technically creation or anything else, you don't need these things. You know, you're still better off maybe buying a Windows laptop if performance is the best thing you need, or just buying something significantly cheaper because these guys are really expensive. And to all you individuals out there who are watching these videos and, and feeling like you need one, trust me, you don't, okay? You don't. We're YouTubers, we're excited. These are the best machines Apple has ever made. So there's a sense of excitement there. Okay, but I promise you a lot of the computers are using right now will last you years to come. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison between M1 Max versus M1 Pro. Please subscribe, like the video, drop any more questions you have in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.